today we're filming in the town of Orford, which is on the coast of Suffolk uh, in England. It's a tiny picturesque town. It used to be a market town. It used to have a, a fishing fleet here. I think it still has a few boats, but it's not as busy as it once was. And we're now in a, uh, a very old, hundreds of years old pub, um, which is standing in for the fictional pub, The Two Brewers, which is set in the fictional town of Danbury, where Detectorist is set. About six months ago, I was asked to work with Mackenzie on the script for uh, the series. Um, they'd done a taster tape, a little pilot tape, and uh, I was brought in to help Mackenzie develop the scripts, turn it into the series, and I've worked with him since then. I came up with the idea for Detectorists probably a couple of years ago, not too long ago, but um, just started exploring this strange pastime and the sorts of people that, that involve themselves in this hobby. And I, I just found it to be a fascinating world, and so I, I decided it was right for a, a comedy series. The metal detecting is a metaphor for the, these guys, these middle-aged guys, they're searching out in the field, searching for treasure, searching for old gold. But, um, but in fact, you know, what they're actually searching for is happiness in their lives and in their relationships. Um, so this, this series follows their lives and their private lives and then they have this escape out to the country, this meditative um, hobby where they can just escape from the rude world and, and talk rubbish to each other and look, stare at the ground and it's, it's and it could easily have been fishing or golf or another lonely hobby. It's quite a lonely pastime, metal detecting. We're shooting this in the summer, but normally it would all be done in the autumn and winter when there's no crops in the fields. And these guys just trudge up and down these bleak stubble fields in the biting wind, staring at the ground. But they're intent and they're obsessed about this pastime and what they could find and, and their history beneath their feet. And roll sound. <coughs> Straight. Turning over. Turning. So the scene we're filming today is the uh, the, the pub quiz uh, scene from uh, the episode four, uh, where Andy and Lance have split up. They've had a row over uh, over Andy going off and discovering gold on his own without Lance. So with the two boys not speaking to each other, they've recruited their own teams, and so they're in opposition for the first time at the monthly quiz night at the Two Brewers. And action. Jesus, And if everybody's ready, round one. We had uh, Mackenzie and Toby and Rachel who'd all been involved in the taster tapes. Um, we had a cast uh, for the other parts um, in the series, and that process had taken us a couple of months, but all the actors have just been charmed and entranced by the quality of the writing and the, just the beautiful setting and idea behind Detectorists. So we've been able to attract a really top-rate cast. It's been marvellous, actually, great fun. My name is Rachel Sterling and I play Becky in The Detectorists. Becky is Andy, Mackenzie's character's girlfriend. She's quite long-suffering. She's a teacher. She's, they've been together a long time. She doesn't understand quite why he's so fixated with metal detecting, but sort of puts up with it. And, um, and they love each other very much. They have great banter together and make each other laugh. And um, I mean, I wouldn't immediately have put myself with Mackenzie as an on-screen couple, but I think we kind of work. We, we do make each other laugh in life, so it's easy to play. About a year ago, Matt rang me up and said, um, I've written you a part as my <coughs> girlfriend. <coughs> Sounded a bit nervous on the end of the telephone. <laughs> no. We'd done a play together um, a couple of years ago, and... Um, and he'd said he'd written, uh, he'd written a taster at that point for the series. And um, so we spent a day filming this promo, but then, then got sent to the BBC. And the, um, and the series was commissioned as a, as a result of that and the scene he did with Toby. So um, it was a real, one of those joyous surprises to hear from him. And, and, and it's, I mean, 
uh, getting involved from an earlier point rather than sort of just auditioning and being cast. Being involved in a project from an earlier point is a great privilege, actually, because you, um, you are more fundamentally involved with, with the making of it and you feel more a part of it, less of a warm prop. <laughs> Being, being at the helm of this and directing it and having written it is that I you know, had a big say in who, who was in it. And so I've obviously chosen people I've worked with before, people who I know are, are good actors. And so to, to get Toby Jones involved was quite a scoop. About seven months ago, uh, Mackenzie sent me some script, having asked whether I'd be interested in reading his uh, opening episode of a sitcom. He's created a, he created a script for a teaser. And I read it, just some three or four pages, and it was really funny. Uh, normally, when friends or acquaintances offer you bits of script, there's a sort of feeling of dread that it's going to be terrible and you're going to have to find some way of getting out of it without hurting their feelings. But it's a tremendous relief when you can say that something's not only good, it's really good. Uh, I didn't really know Mackenzie that well. We'd been in the same films. We had a moment together in the Muppet film most recently, but we've never really worked together. So I was very flattered that he'd sort of spotted enough in what I've done that he thought I was right for this. And uh, also the relief that we share a sense of humour. and We find the same things, broadly speaking, funny. Lance Statter's, um, I suppose, a man roughly my age. Uh, he's uh, obviously a metal detectorist and obsessive. Uh, not just in metal detecting, I think he's obsessive about several things. He's not mad and he's not strange and he's not weird. He's very typically male. And because he happens to be living alone at the moment, not of his own volition, he is allowed to indulge those things m more than is probably healthy. But I think he has, you know, huge interest in his ex-partner and he has a very good community of, of friends and uh, he finds in the club a place to belong and an identity for himself. And one of the things I think is most charming about the whole show um, is its humanity. Is that People who are interested in things other than football and sport are humanised and made and, and, and appreciated and identified as being like the rest of humanity with the same dreams and desires, hopes and fantasies as everyone else. They're not freaks. Um, but because those hobbies are marginal, they can sometimes be parodied as freaks, but Mackenzie has no interest in parodying people. I play Maggie in The Detectorist, and I'm the ex-wife of Lance, who's played by Toby Jones, and uh, Maggie's current beau is Tony, Tony. Yeah. sitting here to my right. Lance, the character that Toby plays, he sort of is like a third part of our relationship as well, in that he gets I almost get him to do the things in uh, the relationship that I don't want don't to do, want like to, looking yeah. after a mother and helping so us shift boxes. Your finger as well, so like yeah, really. <laughs> so I think as long as Lance will have us, we'll still be together. <laughs> well, this is your department, Indiana Jones. What is it? I'm a Pizza Hut manager. Yeah. Um, and I run my own uh, spiritualist shop where I sell crystals and tarot cards and anything kind of anything to do with fairies and lovely magical things. And I let her do that. Yeah. <laughs> She's also away with the fairies, my character, isn't she? She's yeah. They're yeah. both in their own world very yeah. much, yeah. Yeah. Very self-absorbed and selfish characters. And also very self-tanned. Yeah, self-tanned, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the most orange? Uh, I think Me. you are, today, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you are. Proud of that. You nailed that. <laughs> and the winners tonight, who got every question right, uh, apart from the ones in the archaeology round, they were very difficult, the winners are this team here. Oh! Oh! <laughs> there's no real story about how we got together, um, but it's I think it's sort of suggested that there was a crossover between Lance. Oh, 
Is do, there? You, do you think? No, I think I think Lance was. Oh, maybe towards po probably towards the end, possibly. Right. But I don't think it was a massive crossover. I don't. The suggestion like came think, from me, clearly. I like to think. <laughs> Not the script. Yeah, yeah. I like to think that she was done and dusted with Lance, really. Oh, okay. She wasn't that. She wasn't an adulteress. Yeah. You know, I'd like to think that, really. We met in a club somewhere, I would have no, thought. Or Pizza Hut. I oh, probably yeah. came in and, and, and bought a deep pan pizza. And I gave you some dough balls on top. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, I worked with Mackenzie Crook uh, back in 1993 or something horrible like that. And um, Mackenzie asked me if I'd like to take the part of Maggie. Um, and that was that really. I couldn't resist. I read the script and just thought it was hilarious and it'd be an honour to, to play Maggie, um, and then that was that. And I just came the traditional way, uh, uh, a wonderful casting director, Catherine Willis, got me in and um, did the audition, read the script, saw the cast was terrific, and then got really excited when I got the part. I'm Amy Fionn Edwards and I play Sophie. I um, came to appear in the series um, through working with Mackenzie Crook um, in the past on a play called Jerusalem. Um, yeah, and he's been working on this for quite a while, and yeah, he called me in to audition for the part. So I play Sophie, who is a um, uh, ancient history student at the local university, and um, she's a part, um, originally a part of the antique researchers um, group, who, who are a detectorist club, and they ask her to spy on um, some of the other. Um, members of, of, of another group um, to try and steal some permissions and, um, and that way I just get involved with the two the characters Lance and Andy um, and become friends with them. Yeah there's been uh, there's been a lot of surprises you know I wrote all the dialogue and I had a clear idea in my head how it should be delivered uh, how I expected it to be delivered but of course every actor brings their own interpretation of the lines and and that's been fascinating to see how something I wrote can be reinterpreted and made better. And yeah, with the likes of Toby and Amy Fionn and, and Rachel, they're, they're constantly surprising me with better readings of, of lines that I've written. You know, it's, uh, so that's fascinating. Being in the office and Pirates of the Caribbean opened up so many doors for me that, uh, you know, people now know who I am, which is such an advantage in getting work in this industry. You know, I have many friends who are brilliant actors but haven't had that, um, that break early on and have struggled and, and some have eventually given up even though they're, they're superb actors. So, no, I'm extremely lucky to have been involved in, in those two and, and, yeah, others that have got uh, massive followings. Mackenzie is just... He collects tortoises and he's quite like a tortoise. <laughs> he's very quiet and um, unassuming, but we all want to please him. He's got great um, power is the wrong word because he's not really a power mongerer, but he's just very quiet and considered and bright and encyclopedic in all things he turns his energy to. You know, if he wants to find out about metal detecting or um, growing a forest in Essex where he has a plot of land or um, whatever it is, he, he really gets to the root of it and um, no, he's incredibly bright and fun and um, unassuming and, and a joy to work for. And he does all three roles um, with great generosity and, um, and yeah, we all love him, we want to please him, we're like that. <laughs> Do you like it Mackenzie? Do you like it? <laughs> I had such a clear idea in my head of how it should look that it was, it was a natural thing to want to direct it myself because, because I had such a clear idea. And so that's what I'm doing. And it's, uh, it's the first time I've directed something and it's kind of daunting, but I think it's going really well. You wouldn't know that Mackenzie was a novice director at yeah. all. You really wouldn't know, apart from him telling us about his, his fears and his nervousness about it. Not, not a trace of it really, yeah. would, you'd think he'd been doing it for years. And as a performer as well, it's actually a bonus really yeah. to have a performer as the director because he just knows what to say or not to say what to kind of let you go with and and having written it as well and I mean, written it as know, well yeah he just knew exactly how he wanted it to look how, how he wanted it to feel yeah and to have that kind of backing behind you you just feel very safe and yeah. in good hands a confident vision that's always easy for us to kind of work with anything mm. it's hard work when i'm in the scenes i i, I really prefer 
prefer it when I'm not in the scenes and I can actually concentrate on the performances and direct the, direct the other actors. It's very difficult to know whether I've done a good performance and I'm relying on the producer Adam to tell me whether he thinks that my performance is any good because I, I don't know, watching myself on screen has always made me cringe a bit. It's, it's hard to direct myself, but, uh, but it's, it's an enjoyable process. Anyone uh, who's met him or seen him knows he's a very you know, humble guy. He's very modest and he's written something you know, quite exceptional for a first series. It has a lovely balance of story and humour and character. He has immense trust in, uh, in the actors he's cast, so he doesn't feel a huge need to intrude. You know, he's probably the least intrusive director of acting I've ever worked with. But that said, you reach certain points in the script, which is always up for negotiation if you want to. It doesn't need much negotiation. It's been written by an actor, you can tell, because rhythmically the lines work as they're written. The rhythm of the scenes work very naturally. They're easy to learn. They're how people speak. And he's been assiduous in allowing me to offer my ideas, trying to integrate them when I can, when he can. But there's very little that needs doing to it. It's usually stuff that is to do with where we end up filming it and practical things like that, like in any show. I was a stand-up comedian for 10 years, nearly 10 years before I, I, I got into stand-up comedy as a way of getting into acting. Um, so I didn't, by the time I decided, I didn't really want to go to school, or to drama school. But it took me a, a lot longer than, than than I thought it was. I thought I'd be doing stand-up for two or three years and then magically become an actor, but it took 10 years and, and lots of Edinburgh festivals, but, but it worked out eventually. Comedic influences, well, I mean, I'm basically a character comedian, a, a character actor, and so, you know, the, the greatest of them, you know, Peter Sellers, I, I grew up watching all of Peter Sellers stuff, and then more recently, Steve Coogan, there's, there's no better character actor than, than Steve Coogan. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I watch a lot of comedy, so, yeah. When you read a comedy script, the comedy of it is registered in, in gags, in one-liners, in uh, smart-ass remarks to each other. And here it's not like that, it begins with character. And how you spot that is that, with, like in a, in, like in a non-comic play, like in a regular play or a regular screenplay, everyone needs something. And that need is articulated here as treasure. So there is the obvious treasure that everyone is seeking, but there are, every single character has, as in a proper drama, has a need, um, has a treasure that they're looking for. So it works on those, on those two levels. You don't have to worry about the comedy, the comedy's dealt with, you know, you just have to play the characters. Yeah, we've been filming all around Suffolk, in, in a lot of it in Framlingham, uh, where we're based, and um, it's, it's beautiful countryside, it's beautiful English countryside to film in. So it's going to look really bucolic and, and, and lush. I've managed to uh, organise a location just far enough out of London so they can't go back to the big city every night. So they're all holed up in a lovely hotel in a very picturesque town in Suffolk. What's not to like about that? They're, they're enjoying themselves immensely. Yeah, well, I've got to know Suffolk a bit. On my days off, I've been gallivanting around the countryside and have really fallen in love with this part of the world. I never didn't really know East Anglia at all. Um, and I've, but I think the way we've shot it, and well, A, because the, sto the, the story is set in the landscape and, and the way the DOP has shot it and got great close-ups of, of the natural world around us, I think we're really kind of selling this place to its, to its best effect. It's, re it's a ravishing bit of England I didn't know before. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. We, we want to move it, not together, but we actually yeah, want to... Yeah, the we characters. Want, we, yeah. Well, even me personally, I'd actually like to buy it somewhere around here. It's so beautiful. Um, we're very lucky working around here. Yeah, it's really we? nice. And just the weather as well has been terrific yeah. as well. So that really feeds into it, everyone's yeah. kind of mood. But yeah, it's perfect, perfect pretty location. Pretty. Mm. Very pretty. It has been one of the funniest things I've ever done. Literally living the dream. It's just been like beautiful weather. Um, and Suffolk is so gorgeous as well. And the people around here are wonderful. Um, and it hasn't felt like work at all, um, and a lot of laughing. 
I think I've met the funniest people in the world on this job. I'm thrilled to bits. We've only this is only our second day. This is our it? second day, yeah. But it's great. It's sometimes you 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 walk into a, a show that's already been filming, and it can be quite a difficult introduction into that, a baptism of fire, really. Whereas this, it was so easy, wasn't it? It was well, just like joining a, a river. Was... Oh, the cast. I mean, you know, the cast has just been so welcoming to us, and we've just not stopped laughing, really, have we? Yeah. I've been professional as well at the same time. Yeah. we have to say that. Yeah, of but course. But we yeah. haven't we haven't stopped laughing, and um, it's just a very relaxed and a nice working environment. Yeah, encouraging environment. And that's yeah. great for comedy because it just makes you create and just have fun with it as well and yeah, do the script and then, add, you know, kind of Make add it stuff. bigger, add, you know, increase your part, make yeah, your part increase, bigger yeah, as, exactly. as we both been doing. <laughs> just keep talking, they won't cut. <laughs> we hope. The locals have been very welcoming and not too intrusive. They haven't seemed that interested in us. Um, occasionally we go out and as Toby says, get looked at, but not often. <laughs> and um, they seem quite pleased to have us, I hope. <laughs> there hasn't been an awful lot of filming in the east of England. I think that's changing, um, but we're, we're ahead of the trend, definitely. And uh, as a result, no one's kind of had their experience <laughs> spoilt by having film crews trampling all over their lovely um, heritage. Uh, and actually, we've had nothing but a great experience with the locals. They've thoroughly enjoyed having us, and we've even thoroughly enjoyed intruding on their lives. It's just, it's just been one of life's joyous jobs. We feel very lucky indeed. Well, I don't think I've ever done comedy before, so it's been really fun to work on a comedy that I have absolutely no doubt about. When you're reading a comedy script, there's always a slight anxiety that you might be going mad in thinking it's funny but it's so clear with this I understood every single situation because it works as a story and it works as a drama primarily and that's been a huge relief so I've really enjoyed how easy that process has been uh, even on a big movie often on a big movie when you're working on big script that's shot over a matter of months. There's constant wrangling over little corners of scenes and, and what might or might not be eventually needed. And here, there's a great pleasure in the momentum of it. Also, there's really funny actors you're working with and that's just pleasure to work with them, you know. So I have a metal detector and I have some land in Essex where I have detected but I could never call myself a detectorist because the guys that do this properly, they, they are completely immersed in it and they, the research they do and the time they spend out in the fields is amazing. And so, I, uh, yeah, it's not really a hobby of mine, but I do find it fascinating. Whilst we've been shooting this, I found mainly shotgun caps. I, I learned very early on not to switch my detector on while we were filming because if we were out there in the fields, trying to act and you get a good signal, it's almost impossible to, to ignore it. And you have to, you have to walk past it. So I've never been turning my detector on, but at lunch times, been going out, found mainly shotgun caps. We had a day off the other day and I went out to a, a field that I got permission to detect on. And I found a musket ball and a tiny little buckle, which uh, I find incredibly exciting. It just, I don't know, that somebody, Somebody fired that, who knows when, maybe during the Civil War. And that's fallen off of somebody's clothing at some point in the past. Who knows how many centuries ago. And that's, these are the things that the detectors are finding all the time. Tiny little bits like that, which are just little, little pockets of time, little bit of social history. And they don't find silver and they don't find gold, very rarely. So it's all, it's all about these little bits and pieces.